Colorado Republicans can't stop Democrats' liberal legislative makeover. Today, they tried to slow them down, way down. But Democrats just sped up. More county sheriffs announced they'll risk jail time by refusing to enforce a proposed gun control law. Hickenlooper Hickenloops again and decides he is a capitalist after all. America's favorite online weather guy says Colorado should brace for impact. Dangerous and treacherous storm conditions and there for Colorado and surrounding areas as well. Let's see if our weather experts agree. And the tough young Coloradan who fought through an injury on stage. Tonight she gets our standing ovation. Next. Colorado Democrats are trying to ram through controversial legislation before the public can get organized against it. I'm guessing that some of you do not like that. Colorado Republicans are trying every trick in the book to obstruct and slow down what they cannot stop. I'm guessing some of you don't like that. Anybody have a problem with both of them? Just me? Okay, that's fine. Let's go into the Gold Dome, where our Ryan Hare watched a battle of petty proportions. You using any provision allowing the licensee an option to that purchase Senate staffer is reading every word of a frankly boring, non controversial 2,000 page bill. Reading the length of war and peace nearly twice over could take 60 hours. Multiple bills were introduced and dropped within just days of each other, and we don't have time to have actual normal debate like we normally would. And therefore, we have to slow this process down. Senate so Republican Ray Scott control. knows nobody needs to hear this that read aloud. Strike 12, 61, this is all about 12, Republicans telling Democrats they don't feel they're getting enough time to discuss controversial bills headed to the Senate. Senators were doing other work as the readings droned on. The 181, the oil and gas bill, the red flag bill, the death penalty bill. We have members all over this building meeting with each other and trying to get our message through. In the minority, you do have less control over the calendar, but you also figure out how to get your work done and make sure your voice is heard. With Senator Kerry Donovan and other Democrats stayed true to form by finding an even faster way to end the quite boring reading of House Bill 1172. You can have a computer program read the bill. And so Alvin and the chipmunks raced through the legislation. The reading delayed Democrats a few hours, but we'll still get the work done and bought Republicans less time than they wanted, saying the speed read goes against the spirit of Senate rules. You can understand that it sounds like Martian right now. We don't even know what what's coming over the speakers. The day also may have earned that Senate staffer who read aloud for hours a cafeteria meal at least probably dinner and maybe a new Mercedes. But you know, other than that, that's his job. I think Senator Scott was joking, but if not, I might need to change careers. The computer speed read ended about a half an hour ago, went on for about six hours total. Simply put, Republicans feel cut out of the conversation and found a way to make that point by stalling the Senate for a day, Kyle. So there are all these controversial bills. That wasn't one of them. Not controversial at all. Passed the House easily and expected to do the same in the Senate. It was just long. All right, got it. Thank you, Ryan. More and more Colorado sheriffs are proclaiming that they'll risk jail time by refusing to enforce Democrats' red flag gun control bill if that becomes law. We've been telling you about these so-called Second Amendment sanctuary counties, and you can now add Kit Carson, Park, Prowers, Teller, and Conejos to the list. Thirteen of them now. Baca County talked about it in the past, but not so far this year. The bill would allow for a judge to order that someone's guns be seized if they are considered a risk. That bill still has not passed the state Senate, but already now dozen plus sheriffs say they would rather be held in contempt of court than go in after someone's guns. Man, people do not like the idea of losing an hour from daylight saving time because it takes away from your quality complaining time on Twitter. Apparently a former state legislator floated an idea this morning that Coloradans should get a direct say in whether or not we leap forward an hour every March. And then Twitter got hot about it. Our Marshall Zellinger looks into the cost of losing time. 525,600 minutes. For fans of the musical Rent, we know that's how you measure, measure a year. But how do you measure an hour? Can you give me an hour of your time so that we no longer have to go through this nonsense of changing clocks twice a year? Former State Senator Greg Brophy hopes you can spare a few seconds of an hour when he starts collecting signatures for a ballot issue so Colorado can forever keep the hour you just gave up. The hard part will be putting together the volunteer network coupled with enough funding from hopefully from uh, social good 
networks to try to pay for at least some of the fundraising. In today's environment, you're probably talking between five and seven dollars a signature. Do the math, that's over, well over a million dollars. Steve Adams owns a firm that collects signatures to get issues and candidates on the ballot. For permanent daylight saving time to make the ballot, 124,632 valid signatures will be needed. To be safe, you want to collect probably double the amount. We would recommend 250,000. I do not have enough money to pay out of pocket to save this hour. You've got to find a sugar daddy or somebody that's got the money. So is one million or more dollars worth one hour? Last year, a group funded by the oil and gas industry spent more than $4 million collecting signatures for a ballot issue, Amendment 74. It lost. The group that wanted a sales tax increase for roads spent more than $1 million to get on the ballot. That issue also lost. On this issue, though, there's one well-known ally. Unrelated to Brophy's announcement, President Trump tweeted this morning, making daylight saving time permanent is okay with me. Maybe this is the thing that brings our country back together. That tweet was not because of Greg Brophy. It was because Senator Marco Rubio is pushing this for Florida and Congress needs to approve it. One quick note, Kyle. I said on the screen there that Brophy hates daylight saving. I confused myself. He loves daylight saving time. This would be November 2020 <laughs> and beyond. OK, there are a couple of options that are open to us, not just mm -hmm. the one that he's talking about. Right. I mean, we could stay on standard time and mm -hmm. stay fall back all the time. Mm -hmm. That, as if we approve that, that's fine. Congress has no say, but for some reason, Congress has to approve Colorado saying yes to daylight saving year round. Yeah. First, we have to say yes, and then we have to wait for Congress to be like, Colorado, that's cool. You know, I think people complain about it no matter what, because people like to complain. All right, thank you, Marshall. Former Governor John Hickenlooper has now done the rare full Hickenloop from his original position to a new one and now back to the old one. It was on the topic of capitalism. Hick is a capitalist, obviously. He's a multimillionaire businessman, longtime entrepreneur, but he repeatedly refused to say aloud that he was a capitalist on MSNBC last week. CBS's Margaret Brennan on Face the Nation gave Hick and Looper a second chance over the weekend. He must have known the question was coming, and we still got this word salad. Why are you uncomfortable calling yourself a proud capitalist? Well, I've been, uh, the point I was making is that we define people by these labels that, that often have all kinds of associations and baggage with them uh, in that sense. Do I believe in small business? Of course I believe in small business. I started probably more than 20 different small businesses. Uh, I'd have, you know, in, in one year I'd have over a million customers. I understand that, but what's happening, I think it's kind of a silly question. Once you get back into these labels, am I a capitalist, am I a socialist, how much of, how much of a capitalist yeah. am I versus how much of a socialist? That becomes kind of silly, doesn't it? Well, I mean, in a funny way, the other candidates were comfortable you know, answering the question, so I wanted to offer you a chance to to answer it. I understand you're not comfortable directly answering, I, 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 but I, I want to move on to. Well, I'm, some, I'm comfortable. I, I'm happy. I'm, Go ahead. Let me just. I'm happy to say I'm a capitalist, but I think at a, at a certain point, the labels do nothing but divide us. In fairness, those satellite interviews are tricky because there's a delay, and you're talking, whatever. Capitalist is a tricky term in the Democratic primary for president. Hickenlooper is uh, toward the back of the pack at this point, polling at about 1%. This time, the driver being called out by an ex-viewer for crossing a line is us. Rachel Beck passed along this drawing made by her son, James. James does not have a camera phone, so he did it old school. And that's so cool until you realize that he drew a nine news vehicle that was parked on the sidewalk outside the state capitol. James was there at the Capitol testifying on a bill to help students with dyslexia. He's the kid in the striped shirt and the glasses. So, James, you caught us. We crossed a line, but you should know that the media vehicles parked there along the sidewalk because that's where Capitol Security asked us to park. We've been doing that for a long time. It is weird, though. I mean, when we drive down there and you kind of like drive up and over the curb and everybody's looking at you strange and, and somewhere off in the distance, a bright young man is, is sketching proof that we've crossed a line. We're getting some feedback on the idea of conservative Colorado seceding to form a 51st state. It's, it's a real thing. Secession has been endorsed by a Republican state Senate leader who also said that breaking away to join Wyoming would be fine with her. Next viewer, Greg Roth, wrote in remembering an old Carl Akers commentary on that subject. I promised Greg that I would look it up for you. And sure enough, back in the day, Carl Akers opined not just on secession, but on the idea of Colorado seceding from the U.S. to form a whole new country. He did this back in the late 1970s. And how about this, Greg? 
Akers offered that commentary, the one that you remembered. He offered it on air exactly 42 years to the day that you asked me about it. So tell me if you don't think that Carl Akers' own words still don't ring true today. At the time we declared ourselves independent, all river compacts and water rights of those out of state would, of course, be null and void. So we could build some oversized head gates on the Colorado and the San Juan and the Rio Grande and sell our water by the barrel. We could cut our unemployment down to practically zero since it would take a lot of workers a lot of months to build the new eight foot chain link fence around the entire border. But admittedly, there would be some drawbacks too. For instance, our present state legislature would become our new Congress or Parliament or whatever we called it. And that would bring up the awesome probability that our 63 counties would become 63 new states with 63 new legislatures. And seeing the problems we have now with only one governor and only one state legislature, it might be better if we simply left well enough alone. The words of Carl Akers, March 1977. Just watching them work together and completely revitalize the show was fantastic. An Irish step dancer goes down with an injury, but this is Colorado, so you know she finished the show. And our incoming snowstorm has caught the attention of the Internet's most famous forecaster. But is he right? Next. You ever see Frankie McDonald's weather forecasts on YouTube? The guy is a legend. So Frankie's on the autism spectrum and his no nonsense, high volume style has earned him 190,000 subscribers. Frankie forecasts weather all over the world. And this week he is warning us. Massive blizzard headed towards Stanford, Colorado on Wednesday, March 13, 2019. It's going to bring up to six to 12 inches of snow and more. Winds are going to be really high in Denver, Colorado. Boulder, Colorado, and Fort Collins, Colorado is going to bring a lot of snow. Winds going to be very strong. Ah, uh, man, Frankie's, Frankie's the best. And our 90s weather team says Frankie's onto something here. You know it's like a good storm system when Frankie is doing his weather forecast because thousands and thousands of people are going to see it. Dangerous and treacherous storm conditions in Stanford, Colorado, and surrounding areas as well. When you see someone, they're so incredibly passionate. I mean, he goes and finds the biggest winter storms that are happening and then just delivers it in a way that I think people just love. Our Nine News weather team, 
Becky Ditchfield, what do you think? You you on Team Frankie on this one? Is this the real deal? It, I think Frankie is definitely onto something. I, I, maybe not as much snow as what he was saying, but it is going to be a huge system for Colorado. Southwest Colorado through those mountains under winter storm warnings. Those warnings extend up into our northern and central mountains. We have blizzard warnings in effect for our eastern plains. Denver, Fort Collins still under a winter storm watch with this all for Wednesday as that rain changes over to snow Wednesday morning. We get some heavy bands move through. It's going to be a tough day to travel. So on the serious note of this, if you have the opportunity to work from home on Wednesday, I would plan on it. Otherwise, limit your travel. Make sure all your errands are done earlier this week. Right now, we're looking at about four to eight inches of snow here for Denver. That six to 12 that Frankie was talking about is more for those blizzard locations out on the eastern plains. A lot of wind for southeast Colorado as well with this system. It will be lasting through Thursday morning, then clears out. And after that, we warm up. And of course, before it all arrives, nice day tomorrow, Kyle, with highs in the low 60s. Not too bad at all. All right. Thank you, Becky. Yeah. So next viewer calls us up to say that he was at this Irish step dance performance at the Lakewood Community Center last night. And, and that's nice. You can keep us updated on your day, but it's, it's probably not news. But then he goes on to tell us about the lead dancers, teenager named Olivia Saylor and how she sprains her ankle during the first act. And then with the help of the other dancers, finishes the Irish step dance performance using a wheelchair. All right, now you got our attention and that of our photo journalist Byron Reed. Last night we did our yearly stage show, and this year it was an adaptation of Cinderella called The Glass Skilly. It's like Cinderella, so the girl goes to the ball and she loses her book. It's just about an hour of storytelling, dancing, acting, and the idea of, you know, obviously someone coming from rags to riches and finding true love is always a lot of fun. <laughs> You know, it looks really easy when we're up there just bouncing around, but it's a lot of hard work for both your muscles and your cardiovascular system. We started the show and we got to the end of act one and our lead dancer unfortunately rolled her ankle on stage. That really got all the people nervous that we wouldn't be able to finish. So we had to rewrite the show a little bit and sort of <laughs> adapt to make that happen. Seamus offered to push Ella into the ballroom. And then they got her a wheelchair and then they decorated the wheelchair. It's always really scary the, just the first time you turn around and see someone hobbling along and she was definitely having a tough time. Um, I got to push her around when we got her out of the room when she was locked up. When Olivia came out on stage, everyone stood up and the whole cast was clapping and the audience was clapping. It was, it was wonderful. I'm proud of her because it takes a lot of guts to go out there as Cinderella in a wheelchair. Could we get an extra special hand of applause for Olivia? It's my favorite thing, just to watch how people are able to rise to the occasion and work together. It's a beautiful thing to be a part of and I love it. I love every second of it. Uh, we would have loved to hear from Olivia as well today, but. Her mom says she's too camera shy, didn't want to talk about what happened last night, left that to her friends. Her mother says she'll be back dancing again in a month once that sprained ankle heals. This bodybuilder has cerebral palsy. I repeat, this bodybuilder has cerebral palsy. Regardless of what it is, there is always a solution, there's always a way through, and there's always a reason to hope. And the most Colorado thing we saw today, someone who heard they got a lot of snow in the mountains, so he decided to bring some home. Next.
Let's meet a man who does not believe in limits. Mark Dubois is a competitive bodybuilder, and he's also living with cerebral palsy. This has been my life. This has been the deck of cards that I've been playing since I've been born. And so to me, this is, this is just who I am. All right, you ready? Yep. My name's Mark Dubois. Get it. All right. Yep, that's better. Everybody calls me Dubes. Here we go. Three, two, one. Every rep and every set and every workout is me Come on. defying the odds and proving the doctor's wrong. Good. Cerebral palsy, you know, that's just, the, that's been one of the challenges I've been handed. It was a birth onset condition. The umbilical cord was wrapped around my neck during delivery. And it's meant 18 surgeries before my 18th birthday, most of those on the lower body. Um, and it just meant that I've had to be stubborn, I've had to be adaptive, and I've had to just hold on to hope and keep fighting. Ready? Yep. Come on. Yeah. Three, there you go. Well, I just did my first men's physique competition this past October, the Colorado Muscle Classic. Took second in my age division, so really came out swinging for my first show. Up, upper, come on, give me three. My future uh, has never been brighter. Come on. I just, uh, you know, just became a nationally certified personal trainer, dream come true. Two, come on. Looking forward to helping people. Three, let's go. Paying forward what's been given to me. Three, good, racket. Other leg. If I could tell anybody who's, who's thinking about changing their life in whatever way, if it's a fitness thing, if it's starting a business, whatever it is, just don't wait. Life is too short. The other thing I would say is watch what you say. Watch words like can't, quit, or limit. They're toxic and they need to come out of your vocabulary right now. And last but not least, um, you decide what your destiny is. You decide what your fate is and just Three, go for it. Two, one, uh, all the way. Come how about that? His story came to us from Next Viewer on Instagram. I hope you're linked up with us on Insta. The most Colorado thing we've seen today when we return, somebody bringing a piece of the high country home. The most Colorado thing we've seen today is someone who is doing their part to help the high country dig out of its recent snowstorms. 
guys bringing a truckload of snow home with them. Do we think this is intentional? Or do we think this is just the pickup truck version of too lazy to clear off my vehicle before getting on the highway? Kayleen saw this on I-70 the other day. Don't worry, she was carpooling. She's not driving when this photo was taken. Safety first. What's the most Colorado thing you've seen today? Use the hashtag HeyNexter. Get our attention or use the uh, email next at 9news.com. Writing in tonight, English says, can a county be held responsible if it refuses to take a gun away from someone dangerous and then that person harms someone? That would be up to the courts. You can imagine a lawsuit like that. I don't have the legal knowledge to tell you what would happen at that point. Also, thanks to everybody who noticed that I forgot to change my watch. See you next time.